See, this is the kind of habitat where you get a lot of cool plants growing. You get the star cactus, you get peyote, all growing beneath the shade of these uh, thorny shrubs. Sometimes a star cactus will grow out in the open because it can just recess into the soil in times of uh, drought and hardship. And uh, you can see what uh, the native culture thinks of the region. You just uh, just got to get rid of it. Got to got to clear it away to make way for uh, what really counts, which is us which is more people. Modus operandi of a cancer cell. Not trying to demonize it too much, just being honest. The guy's not a bad guy, he's just doing what's, uh, what you do out here. And uh, soon there won't be any left to do it to. Say goodbye to the thorn scrub. And so what do we lose when we bulldoze the thorn scrub? We lose a ton of cool stuff, okay? Like this Echinocereus fichii. See that growing in the shade of the mesquite right there? See that? Escobaria emscoteriana, another cool little cactus known only from uh, this region in the United States. Get, get some more in Mexico, but up here, that's it. Get all this cool ground lichen. See that? These lichens that just occur on the ground. The soil is super powdery, and uh, you know, when it's dry, when it gets wet, it's like mush. Perfect nursery for a lot of these cool cactus to germinate as seedlings. And here's Vichelia rigidula, formerly Acacia rigidula. And it was realized it wasn't as closely uh, related to acacia as, as I previously thought. One of the legumes out here, a legume tree, nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots, only gets about yay tall, but provides a perfect habitat for all these very cool cactus and other plants to, to grow under. Because you grow out and exposed, you just get fried. You're not going to last too long. See, everything needs a nurse plant. Even, look at it. You got some shade right there. Okay. Guayacum, zygophilaceae, guayacum angustifolium. Grows very slowly, very beautiful plant. Got red bird dispersed fruits uh, when it's uh, trying to reproduce or whatnot. Look at that guy. Look at him just hiding out in there. Oh, oh, he's beautiful. Oh, you see that? Oh, what a beaut. Oh, this one's a nice one. A kind of serious pentalophus. You can see this guy just growing prostrate on the ground. Who's he got over there? Well, you got another uh, Escobar. It looks like it's in fruit over there. But look at it, you could see this whole colony just looking like uh, like uh, predator dreadlocks. Just growing in the shade of the Vichelia rigidula. Amalaria hydra, I look like a little hockey puck of uh, green tubercles and spines. And there we go, Hematocactus setospinus. Yet another species growing beneath the shade of, uh, well you got rigidula and you got mesquite up there. Coraphantha macromeris, beautiful pink flowers when it blooms. Behind that you got a Echinocereus and the Acanthus. Another banger of a plant, again, just growing in the shade of the, in this case, a miski, a prosopis. Look at that, look, a little man just hiding out. Look, we're using those spines as partial shade screens. See that? Mammillaria spherica. See with the, see with the golden, the golden tinge to it. Little, little yellow tubercle bastard. Look at that, another cool resident of the thorn scrub out here. This giant orb spider. What a beaut. Look at that, about, he's about three inches across. Ugh. Harmless though, totally harmless. And I guess you could bite, but you're not gonna die, are you? Be fine, shut up. And then in the center of all that thorn scrub, you get these really cool gravel beds. And this is where one of the rarest cacti in the United States, if not the world, grows. This is where Astrophytum asterius can be found, the star cactus. And there is Varilla Texana, a member of the Astraceae, the sunflower family. You could see the old uh, flower heads right there. They're yellow when they're blooming. And uh, late winter, early spring. It's a succulent member of compositi, of the composite family. Got those succulent leaves with a woody taproot. Tends to spread clonally, and you often get Astrophytum asterius, a very rare member of uh, the cactus family that grows out here. Rare and declining populations, and this is what the habitat looks like. These gravel beds, very salty soil with the uh, Varilla texana. Varilla texana, there's one other species in the genus. It's in the marigold tribe of Astraceae, the sunflower family. But pretty wild habitat, but I love these gravel beds. Deposited who knows how many millions of years ago by an ancient river. It is hot as balls. I'm sweating like a whore in church. And uh, you can see how people die in this, this heat very easily. It's just there's nowhere to hide from the sun. And one of the rarest cacti in North America, Astrophytum asterius, okay? Losing a lot of, uh, a lot of habitat in the last five years to sprawl and bulldozing. You can see what are really, really easy to miss. Look, just looking like a little sea urchin. They just kind of sink into the ground like that. So we're gonna put some some gravels around them and what they should, give them some cover so he's not getting 
uh, too exposed, and uh, that'll be it. So you lose this when you bulldoze that thorn scrub. Who knows how many plants have been lost to the bulldozer in the last five years alone. A lot of development going on here. Pretty sad, pretty tragic. All right, we really got to zoom out as a species and look at the bigger picture. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a great afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye.